Today we're going to talk about using Obsidian to actually learn new things. Although there are no prerequisites for this video, I'll be assuming you're not just starting out with Obsidian. But if you are, then it might be best to go over some of my Obsidian playlists before watching this one. Alright, so the way I learn is primarily through spaced repetition, but there's a lot more to it, and in this video I'm going to show you my whole process. I want to first go over how I learn new things, because this is something that is not often talked about, and it took me a long time through trial and error to find the system that worked for me. But before I go over my system, I want to also say that for the most part, I don't take on learning new things that I'm not putting into use, because as all of you remember from school, generally speaking, that's not a good way to learn new things. Personally, unless I intend on applying what I'm learning either immediately or in the very near future, I tend to wait until those conditions are met. Alright, so on to the method. I call it the ALP method. Acquiring, learning, and practicing. Let's start with acquiring. What I mean by this is if I'm learning something new, I need a way of consuming and acquiring knowledge. If you're learning a language, you probably have a language teacher. If you're in law or med school, you have your professors. On the other hand, if you're self-taught, then there's a ton of different ways you can consume information. You can watch videos, blogs, take courses, and so much more. Secondly, I need a way to remember what I learned, which is where spaced repetition comes into play. For those who don't know, simply put, spaced repetition is an evidence-based learning technique using flashcards. The reason it's called spaced repetition is because when using flashcards, most spaced repetition software will ask you after each card how easy it was for you to remember it. Usually you just tell it whether it was easy, good, or hard, and depending on your answer, the software will show that card either more often or less often. So if you said it was hard, it might show that card again the day after. If it was easy, maybe in four days. And when you tell it that it was easy for the second time, then it might only show you that one in a week and then two weeks, etc. This way your attention is kept on the ones that you classified as hard until you move them to medium and eventually to easy. There's a lot of programs, both paid and free, that can do this for you. I used Danky for 10 years now since my college days, and as of a few months ago, I've been using the Space Repetition plugin in Obsidian, created by Stefan, which we'll get to in a second. And lastly, I need a way to practice and put what I'm learning to use. This is especially true if I'm learning something practical like programming or Linux, or even languages. I need to take on simple projects, and eventually I need to find more complex ones. If I'm learning a new language, I need to speak it or at least hear it frequently, or I'm going to forget most of it. So let's now look at an example of using the ALP method, and let's say you're learning Python since it's probably the most common way most people start their programming journey. Once you know the very basics, you can try and do something simple on your own, and I mean really simple. I guarantee you, you're still going to find plenty of new concepts you didn't know about, and as you find them, you put them in your vault, you take your notes, and you learn them through space repetition. By the time you take on another small project, chances are you're going to find plenty of the same concepts as the first one, but now you're going to know them but you also find plenty of new ones that you don't, and you repeat the whole process. And the best part is, there's an unlimited amount of projects that you can take on or replicate. And it's when you combine these three things that I've seen learning become exponential. And if what you want to learn is STEM topics such as computer science and math, then one of the best and most engaging ways is through using something like Brilliant, which is very kindly sponsoring this video. Brilliant is an online interactive learning platform geared towards STEM topics where you actually learn by doing. That's what makes it great. Brilliant has thousands of lessons with exclusive new content added monthly. These lessons are curated to increase in difficulty as you go, going from the basics to advanced. Some of the more advanced courses even have their own requirements section, so you can follow a learning path and work your way up. Learning a little every day can have a huge impact. Normally, at the end of the day, I would just find myself mindlessly scrolling Reddit or Twitter on my iPad, and I swap that out with Brilliant, and it honestly feels like I'm playing a game while learning. To get started for free, visit the link in the description, and the first 200 people that sign up get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Alright, so here we are as always at our Mastering Obsidian Vault, and we're going to first install the Space Repetition plugin by coming here to Settings, Community Plugins, Browse, I'm going to type in Space Repetition, and it's the first one by Steven. We'll install, and then enable. We can then come here to Options, and there's not too much to do here, but there are some things that we need for this to work. The first one is telling the plugin which tags to look for flashcards. By default, it comes with hashtag flashcards, but we're going to change that, and it's going to be more clear once we look at some examples. And then a lot of this here is optional, and it's just for you to tailor to your own personal preferences. Personally, the only thing I change here is a separator for inline cards. In here, it comes by default with double colon, but I actually prefer to use double semicolon. So before we continue with the overview in the settings, let's look at some examples and see how it works. I'm going to show you two different ways of using flashcards in this plugin. The first is the most straightforward one, which is using a single note. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to create a new note, and I'm going to call it Linux. This could then transition into a map of content, and I made a video all about maps of content, which I'm going to link to somewhere here on the screen. I'm going to then add a page here, I'm going to call it Linux Flashcards. Then I'm going to open that note, and I'm going to make a YAML header here, and I'm going to tag it with Linux. 
And now we need some flashcards. So I'm gonna copy and paste just a few of my archived Linux flashcards from my main vault so we can see how it works. These were some of the flashcards I used back when I was learning Linux a few years ago when I started my home lab journey. These are called inline flashcards and are the simplest ones to use and it's the type that I use 90% of the time. You put the prompt first and then the answer. So in this case, if you look at my examples, you can see that I have here my prompt, which in this case for the command grep is search lines for a specific input, and then the answer is grep. You might notice that a lot of people would have this reversed, so they would have here grep would instead be the prompt and search lines for a specific input would be the answer. However, I found that specifically for learning commands and syntax, I like to swap them around. So I like to be shown what something does, and then I need to remember the command that does it. For instance, if we look at this example here, if I'm configuring a new Linux system and I'm in the terminal, what I will know is what I want to do, right? I want to search lines for a specific input. What I won't know is how to do it. So for me, it makes more sense to have this be the prompt and then this be the answer. All right, so now we need to come back to the plugin settings and tell it which tags to look for. So in this case, we tag this one here with Linux. So if I come back here into the plugin settings, I need to put hashtag Linux here. So now I'm gonna exit out of this and I'm gonna press this new icon here called review flashcards. And when I press it, you can see we have here a Linux hashtag to review. And once we press it, we have our flashcards. You can also press command P for command palette and type in review all. And we have here space repetition, review flashcards from all notes, and it's gonna take you to the same window. And as always, you can also assign a hotkey to it. And then you can simply rate each flashcard. So if I come here, go to Linux, I'm gonna be displayed the prompt and I need to try and remember the answer. Once I think I know the answer, I'm going to press show answer, and then I can decide, was this hard to remember, was it good, or was it easy? And then depending on which one I choose, it's going to tell me here how many days it's going to wait to show me this specific flashcard again. And like I said in the beginning of the video, if you tell the plugin that a flashcard was easy one time, it'll wait X amount of days. If you tell it it was easy for a second time, it'll wait even longer before it shows you that same flashcard again. You can adjust how often the algorithm serves you new flashcards. So if you come here back to the plugin settings and you scroll all the way down, we have here an algorithm section. And before you change these values here, make sure that you check the algorithm implementation so you understand how it works and then how you can change it to benefit your needs. Using the flashcards like we did here all in one page is perfectly fine, but that's not how I use it. So the way I use it is, let's first come back to our Linux little mock here. And let's say that I'm learning Linux in a network environment. So I'm going to put here a new note and I'm going to call it Linux networking. So I'm going to go inside that note and I'm also going to do a YAML header and I'm going to tag it with Linux. And let's say I took my usual notes here. And then as I worked and studied through the Linux network environment, I came across a few commands such as ifconfig, traceroute and ping. So then I can add them here as flashcards. I can even add a flashcard section and automate the whole process using templates. And I can go and review all flashcards and the new ones that we just added inside Linux networking are gonna show up here because it's in a page that's also tagged with Linux. So why do it this way where you have a bunch of flashcards across multiple nodes as opposed to one node having all of your flashcards? And the key reason I do it this way is because a lot of times when I'm reviewing my flashcards, I want more clarification and context on the specific flashcards that I got wrong. And doing it this way, I can easily come into the note where the flashcard lives for more clarification. So let's look at an example. I'm going to review my flashcards and let's see if we can find one of the ones that we just added inside Linux networking. So I'm going to press here and while well, that's the first one, I have config. And let's say that I'm reviewing this and it's hard and I show the answer and I got it completely wrong, right? And then I want to know more about this because this one was hard and I couldn't figure it out. So then I can press edit later and it's going to take me to where that flashcard lives. So in this case, it lives in Linux networking and presumably I would have a bunch of notes here so I can get more clarification. And you don't have to have it displayed as edit later, you can just come here into the settings and we have an option here, show file name instead of edit later. So I'm gonna to toggle it on, I'm gonna exit out of this, come again to review flashcards and when we press on any flashcard, you're always gonna have the title of the note up here on top instead of edit later. So let's now go back to the plugin settings because there's a lot more to this plugin than what I've just went over. The first is that there's four different types of flashcards. We just went over the inline flashcards, but there's also inline reversed, multi-line, and multi-line reversed. So let's look at the command ifconfig here as an example. If we leave it as it is, the plugin is going to create only one flashcard where this is the prompt and this is the answer. If we instead have this as an inline reversed by changing here from double semicolon to whatever you have for inline reversed, the plugin is gonna create two flashcards per line. So it's gonna have one where ifconfig is the prompt and this is the answer, and another one for ifconfig is the answer and this here is the prompt. 
This is super helpful because sometimes once you've done the same flashcard over and over again, you start to memorize the answer by just looking at a couple words of the question. And this is a very effective way to prevent that. And then you have multi-lines, which as the name suggests, is for having multiple lines in a single flashcard. So if you come back here into this example, instead of having it like that, you would have fconfig, and the separator for multi-line is a question mark, if I remember correctly, and then you have another line for the answer. And then finally, you also have multi-line reverse, which is the same thing as inline reverse, but for multi-line. You can find more about these different options in the documentation, which I've linked to in the description below. So then going back to the settings, you can also choose which type of separator you want for each type of flashcard. And as you can see here, you also have closes, which is basically a fill in the blank flashcard where blank is the answer. This is particularly helpful when your answer depends on context. So for something like learning languages where different context completely changes the answer, this is very helpful. And then we have here notes, which is a feature that I don't use, but it's essentially a review system for entire notes. So you tag a note with hashtag review or whichever tag you specify here, and then you go over them and rank them as easy, good, and hard. And the plugin will apply the same rules as when you rate a flashcard. So if you said it was easy, it'll only ask you to review that note later and later. I don't use this, but I think this is especially useful for college students, you know, depending on your major. I want to also talk about using other people's flashcards because that's something a lot of people do and you can definitely do it as well, but I tend to avoid it because the whole point, at least for me, is to focus on my own journey on learning a topic and I want to include only what I've come across. So for instance, let's say that I'm learning Linux commands. Every time I come across a command that I had to look up for a project, then I put it in my vault and add it to my flashcards because I'm actively using those commands and I need to know them. Now let's say I add a bunch of other people's flashcards for their Linux commands. I'm then using the flashcards that other people found useful for their projects, which even if they're useful to me in the future, they might not be useful right now, which means that I'm just clogging my flashcards for no reason when I could be using my limited resources to learn concepts that I'm actually using. And eventually, I might come across those commands in my projects and that's when I add them, because from my experience, when you're reviewing your own flashcards, it makes you much more engaged and focused in learning them. That's just my own personal thoughts on it. I know people that use flashcards built by others with great success, so your mileage may vary. I know that many people have concerns with using any community plugins at all, which is why I made this video right here. So make sure to check that out. Thanks Brilliant for sponsoring this video and thanks to all of you for watching. Have a great one. Bye.